tutorial, we're going to learn to make these fingerless mitts. They're stretchy and they have a cable down the back of them and they're a pretty quick knit in DK weight yarn. They're sized in two different sizes, small medium, which will fit most women, and medium large, which will fit most men. And I'm going to put these at about an intermediate level, and I'll explain why in a moment. One of the reasons I'm excited about doing this tutorial is it gives me a chance to talk through a pattern that uses the phrase at the same time. Because a lot of different patterns do, especially sweater patterns. And what that means is that you're keeping track of at least two things going on in a pattern at the same time. And for the most part, my tutorials are pretty straightforward and don't have you doing this. But these do in that we have to keep track of thumb gusset stitches as well as cable twist stitches. And so I'm, I'm glad to bring this to you and um, be able to show you how those things work together. So when you move on to other patterns, it'll be easier. Um, this, this tutorial also gives me a chance to show you cables and chart reading. The pattern includes both written instructions for the chart as well as the charted instructions so you can pick which one you like and working with DPNs and if you are um, if you prefer magic loop the pattern does give guidelines for using a long cir long circular needle instead of the double pointed needles I'm going to be demonstrating and I think that's everything if you want to um, if you want to get a copy of the pattern to follow along, again, it comes in two sizes. You can click through to my website here and there'll be information about the yarn I used, um, the materials you need to knit it, as well as how to get your pattern. And in the next segment, we're going to cast on and get started with the cuff. In this tutorial, I explained earlier that we have a at the same time thing going on. So I've decided to break it up to make it as easy as possible. In this first segment, we're just going to deal with the construction of the glove, meaning the cuff and the thumb gusset. And in the next segment, we'll actually talk about the thing that goes on at the same time, which is the cable twists. So in the, in the pattern, it makes it very clear where these things start to merge. But here, I'll break it down so that you can understand one and the other before you bring them together. But I want to show you some detail of the mitts and the cable, so let's go ahead and take a look. Here's the one I'm wearing with the cable down the back in this color. And I used Knit Picks Hawthorne Sport for all of these that I knit. Um, and I'll give you the details on the colorways I used on my website. This is the man size. And the sizes, the, the gloves are really stretchy. And you can see this does, this fits me pretty well. But I also know that it fits a man hand too. There's the cable there. And I also knit them in this rose color. But I want to show you a detail close up of the cable. This is the a little swatch I knit of the cable while I was designing the mitts so that I could see exactly how long it was going to be to fit on the back of the glove. And in this solid color, you can see the cable twists a little bit better. OK, we are ready to cast on. And I'm using much bigger yarn and much bigger needles than is called for in the pattern. And I always do this in my tutorials so that you can clearly see what I'm doing. And we're going to cast right on to double pointed needles. And this pattern, I have broken it down, uh, the instructions down, so that every time something happens in the pattern, <laughs> every time something you have to pay attention to, I refer to N1, N2, and N3, telling you exactly what's on needle one, needle two, and needle three. And I am just going to cast on here. And I'm doing the long tail cast on the way that I like to do it. Whoops. My hands are sticking to the yarn a little bit. Um, I feel like I get the best tension by doing a long tail cast on this way. You, um, this is also a long tail cast on. Or you can do a knitted cast on. But I'll give you a link here to a slow demonstration of how I like to cast on. And I'm no good at counting and talking at the same time. And I'm doing a, kind of an abbreviated version of the gloves here with fewer stitches than the actual gloves need. Oh, wait, this is what I was going to show you. Um, 
I have all the stitches that I need on the first needle, so I'm going to act like I'm ready to cast on another, but grab an empty needle and put it in there, and then cast right onto this needle. You can cast all the stitches onto one needle and then transfer them to the other two, but if you can get good at this, it saves you some time. Whoops. And things are kind of flopping around like wind chimes here for a while. Until we get it all connected. Gosh. You know, one thing I'm used to, um, I'm used to holding the knitting over my lap when I'm casting on with DPNs and not over a table. Okay. Now the pattern told me exactly how many to cast on for needle one, needle two, and needle three. And then to get started on the DPNs, I'm going to set this out in front of me on a surface, on a table, and make sure that all of the knots are on the inside of the DPNs. We want to make sure that nothing's twisted. This is where the working yarn is coming from, this stitch here, and this is going to be the first stitch that we knit. And when I knit this stitch with this working yarn, it's going to close it all up so that I'm knitting in a tube. And the first section of the gloves, I'll pull this in here, is two by two rib all the way around. Well, almost two by two rib all the way around. We have one panel that is wider with pearls because it eases us up into the cable. So I'm going to get myself ready here to knit this first stitch, slide it close to the tip, empty needle in my right hand, I put that needle into that first stitch without really picking anything up off the table yet, grab the working yarn, then once I have that, I can pick it up, wrap the needle, and pull that stitch through. Okay, so I knit two stitches, I'm ready to purl a stitch, so I pull the yarn forward between the two needles, whoops, and purl two, then pull the yarn back between the two needles, and knit two, And the pattern will be really clear about exactly what to knit. This cast on row is, of course, sticky. It's not sticky, it's just the hardest row to knit. Okay, now. After you finish the first needle, you're ready to move on to the next needle. And so we have the same situation we did at the beginning. The working yarn's coming from this stitch, and the stitch to the left of that is my next stitch. I have an empty needle in my right hand, and I don't have to worry about it twisting this time. Okay. You s might see me that I'm having to use a lot of strength to get these <laughs> stitches through. <laughs> it's because it, today in Texas, it rained and it made the world quite humid. And so my hands are kind of sticky and the yarn is kind of sticky and stitches aren't flowing the way they should. That's one of the dangers of knitting in Texas, I guess. Okay, again, my working yarn's coming from here. I finished needle two. My next stitch is here on needle three, and so I put an empty needle in my right hand, and I'm just going to knit across these stitches. And this is the basics for double-pointed knitting. And after you finish, I'm running out of yarn. After you finish three needles, needle one, needle two, needle three, you have completed a round, and you're back at the beginning of the round. And that's what you're going to do. You'll follow the pattern to knit 
the ribbed cuff this way, and then eventually you'll just do some plain knit stitches on needles two and three to give you the stockinette part, the smooth stockinette part of the, the inside palm of the mitts. Okay, now we're still talking about the construction of these, and we're ready to get into what the thumb gusset's going to look like. You see, again, I'm using much thicker yarn and needles than you would normally use for these gloves, so you can really see what I'm doing. And I'm going to get started on the thumb gusset here. We are going to say that I've knit enough of the cuff, and I'm ready to go into the next section of instructions. And this is what this is going to look like. You're going to follow the instructions to knit up to where the thumb goes, and there are different instructions for the right and left thumb. You want to take a marker and put it on the right needle because we're always going to be increasing at this same spot to make the thumb gusset. And then I'm going to do a make one left. If I pull the stitches apart, you see there's this bar between the two stitches. If I pick up that bar and put it on the, the left needle from front to back, and then knit that stitch through the back loop. I usually find it's easier to put it in through the front loop and roll it over. I've just made a stitch where there was none before. Let me do that again. Here's the bar between the two stitches. I pick it up and put it on the left needle from front to back and knit that stitch through the back loop and knit one. And now I'm going to do a make one right so we have mirror image increases on the two sides. I pick it up and put it on the left needle from back to front, and then I'm going to knit it through the front loop, a normal, a normal knit. And I'll show you that one more time. Pick it up from back to front, and then knit it through the front loop. I usually find it's helpful to create a little slack on the stitch so the needle can get in there and then place another marker. Okay, and then you'll finish the row, and you'll have these same increases every other row. And of course, at the same time, you'll be doing cable twists, but um, you'll make one left, knit all the stitches in between, well, let me back up. You'll slip the marker, make one left, knit all the stitches up to the next marker, make one right, slip the marker, and then just work in pattern, in your cable pattern, in your ribbing pattern, um, until you get up to these again, and then the next round, you just knit right through, and then the following round, every other round is an increase round. That's the way to say it. Every other round is an increase round. And then eventually, the pattern will tell you exactly how many stitches you need between the two markers for each size. And this is, um, we're going to say that I have enough stitches between the markers and I'm finished with the thumb. And I want to put these stitches on reserve. I want to, um, uh, well, let me show you what it ends up looking like. I want to put scrap yarn in those stitches to reserve them because I'll come back and finish knitting the thumb later. So I'm going to get myself a piece of yarn. And I don't have any yarn in a contrasting color here, so I actually use, usually use sock yarn. I have some silver sock yarn that I like to use because it always really shows up with almost every color. So I'm at the row where I'm ready to reserve these thumb stitches. And I work up to the first marker and I take it out, and I take a tapestry needle and my scrap yarn, which is better in a contrasting color, and I'm going to slide all of these thumb stitches onto the scrap yarn. And they can just hang out there. I also usually like to tie a little knot in the end, just in case, just in case. Tie these two together so that if I stick it in my bag and I pull it out and I grab it by that yarn, it won't come out. Now, these are reserved and we want to just continue the row so the hand is, you know, the hand continues without those thumb stitches. We want them, the thumb to stick out like it does on a hand, but we have to cast on one stitch over this gap. So we're going to do a backwards loop cast on. You take the yarn 
in your um, left hand and you hold on to the needle in your right hand, put your thumb on the yarn like this and flip. And then put the needle in that loop and tighten it up. It's like half of the long tail cast on. So I've cast on one stitch there and then I just keep knitting or just keep working the round. And look how neat that is. The thumb is there, those stitches are held, and you just keep going on and on. You've really finished, by the time you get these stitches reserved, you've really finished the construction of the glove. You can just focus on the cable twists at that point. Well, that was it as far as the construction of the glove goes. And I think you'll find if you're knitting mittens or gloves or fingerless mitts, the construction is about the same for thumb gussets from most of these patterns. So hopefully this will help you with um, other patterns as well. Next up, we're going to start with the cable charts. Now that you're an expert on the construction of the gloves, it's time to add another element, and that will be the cable charts. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. This is an actual bit of the cable chart right here. And there aren't very, very many stitches in this cable chart. It makes it pretty good for adding an element of uh, something else to think about <laughs> while you're working on the mitts. This is the chart right here, and this is the key. And I've blown this up to be just a little section of this so we can talk about it. Now, anytime you're reading a chart and you're knitting in the round, you will always read from left to right. This is. Uh, round one, two, three, four, five, and every round is going to be from left to right. If you were knitting a flat piece, you would read right, well for the most part, almost all patterns are this way, you'll read the right side rows from left to right and the wrong side, I mean right to left and the wrong side rows from left to right. But this one is always going to be this way. And we have knits, purls, and then three cable stitches. And the knits, when I blew this up, I ended up with a, a little black square. It's supposed to be gray. All the gray stitches are knits, and all the circle stitches are purls. And then after that, we have three different cable stitches, left purl cable, right purl cable, and 12 stitch right cable. So we see on uh, round one, and because we're reading right to left, these first stitches are a left purl cable. It co covers three stitches. Then we have a knit, then a left purl cable, purl, purl, right purl cable, knit, right purl cable. And we're going to actually walk through some of this right now, and I'll show you the different cable stitches. I have this sample here, and it's a flat piece of knitting, so I don't have to keep going all the way around to show you the different cable stitches. If you're knitting on double-pointed needles, you can just use a double-pointed needle as a cable needle. I actually find that doing the 12 stitch cable, it's easier to use a long uh, double pointed needle. But a cable needle, they can look something like this. There are like a hundred different shapes of cable needles. I happen to like these. They're a little bit thinner in the middle and thicker on the outside and they hold the stitch as well. Um, I am going to knit up to, well in the pattern there's a setup round and you will place markers and the cable chart exists between those two markers. So I'm going to knit up to the first bit of the chart or work up to because I have some pearls in there as well. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at the chart. So I have this stitch first, which is the left pearl cable. Take my cable needle and this is all explained in the pattern, of course. I'm just going to walk you through how it's worked. You slip two stitches to the cable needle and hold in front of the work. You just hold those there and let them, let them hang and then you purl one stitch and then knit two from the cable needle. And then I finish that. I have a knit stitch between those. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. Slip two stitches to the cable needle and hold in front of work. Purl one knit two from cable needle. And if you've never worked cables before, <coughs> at the first time you do it, I think you kind of wish you had an extra set of hands to hold on to everything, but you do get used to it. Or you just take it slow at first. 
And here we have purl, purl, and then a right purl cable. And the right purl cable is slip one stitch to cable needle and hold in back of work. And this is how we get these twists, these twists, these twists is by holding it in the front and the back. And then knit two stitches from the left needle and purl one from the cable needle. And then I have a knit stitch between those two. I'm going to work that same thing again. Whoops. I knit two. Slip one stitch to the cable needle and hold in back of work. Knit two. And then purl one from the cable needle. OK. Once you finish a cable round, you know, like your first few, you're going to be really excited, but there isn't going to be much to see until you finish a few more rounds. Um, you can't really see the twists until you get a little bit away from it. But for the most part, the even numbered rows are going to be knit the knits and purl the purls. They aren't all knit the knits and purl the purls. There are a couple few stitches that are off, and it's only to kind of exaggerate the shape of the cable. Just follow the instructions. <clears throat> you can trust the pattern. <clears throat> now I'm going to freak you out by unraveling this so I can show you the, the long cable, the 12 stitch cable. I say freak you out because <laughs> people panic when I unravel things without being careful about it. These big stitches, I'm not too worried about it. You will not be doing this in yours. <laughs> Okay. I get I could tink back, but not very successfully because the cables when they come loose, uh, the stitches aren't all that straightforward. They don't come uh, loose in order. Okay, now we have one stitch left that appears in this row five, which is the 12 stitch RC. And this doesn't come up very much in the pattern. Let me show you. It's the cable that makes the big twist here and here. And it's a lot of stitches, but I think it's cool to work. So we're going to pretend that I'm up here on round five to tw work 12 stitch RC. I'm actually going to use a double pointed needle to work this cable just because there's so many stitches involved. So I'm up to where, whoops, I need to purl two stitches first. I was going to say I was up to where I'm going to do this, but I was not. I'm making a correction here. There's my second purl stitch. Okay, it says slip six stitches to cable needle and hold in back of work. So two, four, six, and hold that in the back of the work. And then I'm going to let that hang there, and I'm going to work off the left needle here in uh, knit two, purl two, knit two. Actually, do I have this right? I can show you the technique even if my sample, oh, I know, because I didn't work uh, round four before round five, my stitches that I'm working don't look right, but I can totally show you the technique. So don't worry. I'm going to knit two, purl two, knit two, and really work on keeping good tension here because you have, you're kind of reaching way across to hit those stitches. But they're just normal knit and purl stitches. Now I'm going to knit off the cable needle. Knit two, purl two, knit two. I think I've got a twisted stitch here when I put it back on the needle. There we go. And then on this round, I end with purl two. Let's 
finish up this needle. Okay, that was the big twist. You can actually see it in this bulky yarn, the big twist that I just did, one over the other like that. It's very cool, I love working cables. Let me see if there's anything else. Nope. Next up, we're going to uh, talk about finishing the thumb and binding the gloves off and finishing them up. In this last segment, I have kind of a, several different tips and tricks to show you how to finish these up because after, we've really been through the hardest parts of these mitts, the construction of the mitt and the cable that's going on, and the rest of it is really not a whole lot, but we have two different bind offs going on. I wanna show you how to finish up knitting the thumb, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the first one is, I wanna show you is <clears throat> binding off in pattern. And this is a pretty common technique. You might already be familiar with it. But that's what we're going to do around the top of the mitt, the finger part of the mitt. And I'll tell you, because I know people are gonna ask this question, can I use a stretchier bind off for this? And the answer is you can, but I tried it and it ended up being too loose. You kind of actually want some structure there to hold the whole thing together, especially because there's so much stretch with the rib all the way around the mitt. But if, you've, if you uh, work it up and you feel like you want more room, you can certainly do um, a stretchier bind off. But I stuck with binding off in pattern, so that's the first thing I'm gonna show you. Let's go ahead and take a look. We're back to this poor old sample. <laughs> this poor, <laughs> it's been unraveled and re-knit. This is the third time now in this video. Okay, to bind off in pattern, you want to do a regular bind off with knitting the knits and purling the purls. And uh, we've talked about this a lot in videos. When you see a V, here like this, that is a knit stitch. And when you see a bump like this, that's a purl stitch. And so we want to just maintain that pattern as we do this bind off. So I have two knit stitches there, knit, knit, pull one stitch over the other like a normal bind off. And my next stitch is a purl. So I yarn forward to purl one and bind off and yarn forward to purl one. And you see I pull the yarn back again because when it's in the front, it isn't as easy to pull it over. So I always pull it back after a purl stitch to make it easy to bind that stitch off. Knit one, bind off. Knit one, bind off. Purl one, pull the yarn back to do it. Bind off, purl one, bind off. And you'll see this gives us a nice looking, a nice looking bind off. It looks good on top of the mitts for sure. Okay, so that's what you're going to do at the top of the cuff, um, the top of the, the finger part of the mitts. And now I wanna show you how to actually finish knitting the thumb. Because we've reserved the stitches, but we haven't knit like any length on the thumb yet. So this is how it's going to go. Take your double pointed needles, and I always start with the, the thumb sticking out to the left, and I start here at the base like this. And the pattern will tell you exactly how many stitches to put on each needle. Slide stitches onto the needle. And again, this is an abbreviated version of the glove. You, there are, you'll have more, more thumb stitches than this. Okay, once you have all the stitches on three needles, you can pull out your scrap yarn. And again, I always start here, attaching the yarn here with the thumb sticking out to the left. Regardless of it's, if it's the right or left mitt, I always start here. And this is how we're going to attach the yarn. Take an empty needle and put it into that first stitch, and then take your yarn and it's important to leave yourself a little bit of a tail here because we have a plan for that tail. So at least a six inch tail. Make a loop and put that around the back needle and then pull that through and your yarn is attached at this point. Just drop the tail end. And just like when we were knitting the rest of the mitt, you move on to the next needle the exact same way. You just have far fewer stitches.
when you get to the end of the third needle, you remember, whoops, you remember we cast on a stitch when we reserve the thumb stitches, we cast on a stitch right here, and we want to pick a stitch up from that same spot. So with the third needle in your hand, you want to go under two legs, and you probably want to try it out a couple of times. This is pick up and knit, wrap it and pull it through, and actually I'm kind of surprised by how well that turned out. Nope, see there's a big gaping hole. I don't want to pick up there. This is what I always do. I put it in a spot, wrap it and pull it through, and then give it a tug, and if it leaves a big horrible hole, I drop it and try picking up somewhere else. I already know where I want to pick up. I want to kind of pick up in the center here if I can. Wrap it and pull it through, and give it a tug, and that looks good. Okay, after I pick up that stitch, I'm going to take the tail end that I started with and my working yarn and tie them together in a tidy knot. And then just keep working around. Um, you want to definitely take note on how many rounds you knit when you're doing the thumbs. And if you have been working on, if you decided to knit these on Magic Loop, I think so few stitches on Magic Loop ends up getting kind of, um, pretty tricky. I think it's pretty cumbersome to have all of that, that extra, um, extra cord hanging around. Now I'm going to take these needles out because there's one more trick I want to show you. No, actually two more tricks I want to show you, but I want to show you something on here. So we're going to pretend that I finished knitting this and bound it off because anytime you change direction in knitting, like we have here with this, you can end up with a gap right here at the, uh, the crook of the thumb. Let's take a look at one of the finished mitts. Right here you can end up with a gap, but you don't have to leave it that way. That's why we left that tail when we attached the yarn. I've already closed this one up. You can see it looks really good. There's no gap. But this happens when you are knitting raglan sweaters and when you change direction to attach the sleeve, the same thing can happen. I'll show you my solution for that. Take your tail end and a tapestry needle and then put the glove on. I'm right-handed, so I always put the glove on my left hand, regardless of whether it's the left or right mitt. And this thing is huge, it's, <laughs> it's so big on my wrist. Uh, but you'll get the idea. And if I have a gap here, I can just do what it takes to close it up. And I'm sort of weaving in the end and closing it up at the same time. And as I'm doing it, I can take a look, and that looks pretty good, and then I'll poke the end in, and then that looks great, no gap. I mean, the thumb's not done yet, obviously, these <laughs> that doesn't look that great, but I know that I can just close up the gap there and it'll be secure and look really good. And then there's one more thing I want to show you, and we've covered this in videos a lot before, just tidy finishing work. We did the awesome binding off and pattern at the top, but when you're knitting in the round, um, you're always, you're knitting in a spiral, essentially. So the, the very end of the work of the last row is higher up than the beginning of that row. And so we end up with a jog there, and I want to show you how to fix that. We still have the tapestry needle in hand, and we have to weave in this end anyway. So end of, end of uh, cut end, and here's the beginning of that round. Go under two legs of the beginning of that round, pull it tight, and then go back in right where that, very close to where that end came out. And what we have is just a continuation of the V's in the bind off, and it totally corrected that jog. And it'll look even better after blocking. And then you can just take that end and weave it into the back of the work. Wow, that last session was just full of tips and tricks. Anyway, good luck on your mitts. I'm excited to see the different colorways you all choose and how they look. Good luck.